Good morning everyone, it's Beck here from Hello My Name is Beck, popping in today to show you January's Craft Club Challenge. So I am a Patreon of Vivian at the Paper Letter Blog and her challenge this month for her Patreon members is um, an association challenge. It um, is to do with something that you might be reading or um, a film you've watched or a series you might be watching. And um, so to make a happy mail or journal page or anything you like in association with something that you've you've been doing recently. So I have decided to make a happy mail based on a movie I've watched on Netflix called Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes is um, a movie about Sherlock Holmes's sister. And um, I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was it was done really well. Um, so I am basing my Happy Mail on that. Now, if you want to skip to the actual mail making, um, I think it's at four minutes forty one. But um, what you see me doing here is making a cipher. Um, a cipher is like a decoder. Um, and it's something that gets used in the movie. Um, so Enola's mum leaves her a cipher um, to decipher some messages that's left for her. So it's something that I wanted to make. Um, and so I actually made this um, the day before I actually started the mail because I found um, something on YouTube or no it was actually on Google um, that helped me make the cipher um, so that um, it was something that could be used by the recipient of this happy mail um, I thought that was a rather cool idea um, and you'll see later me make a, a message um, using a code that I've made up um, so it's literally just um, on the outside ring um, is the full alphabet and um, I've just cut out a notch there for you to be able to see which letter that you're on um, and I'm just piercing a hole through the actual paper and then I also take like a mini punch with my croc crocodile and um, I don't know whether you can see there, but there's a little white circle under one of the envelopes on the on the front page. And so that white circle then becomes the other letter. Um, so I'm just using a brad here to put through so that you can actually turn that top layer um, to get the right uh, letter. So I really enjoyed making this on the day before because it really inspired me the next day to get on and make the actual Happy Mail. I was, um, when I first heard this challenge, I was very um, not sure on how I was going to go about it. But um, this is actually probably one of my favourite challenges now because... When you see the end result, the end mail, I absolutely love how it turned out. So I've actually created um, off screen um, a code um, with matching letters to each of the alphabet. And so I'm just writing those through there. I did skip through so that you didn't have to watch me do the whole code and the whole alphabet. Um, so, yeah, and... Um, I also make a message um, to give to my recipient for later. So that should be the end of this one, the end of the cipher. And then let's move on to the actual Happy Mail. Um, I don't know whether you've seen the movie Enola Holmes, um, but I really, really enjoyed the idea of a detective mail. Um, and also um, it, I found that Enola Holmes was kind of, I know it was um, staged um, back in history, but um, I found that the actual movie itself was quite steampunk. Um, so 
I'm just showing you the measurements here. This is not a tutorial on how to make this. However, I am showing you the measurements if you'd like to actually give it a go yourself. Um, I received a mail recently from Lizzie Hill. And um, if you've seen that video, you'll, you'll see how cool the flipbook was. Um, it's actually quite a flat flipbook. It's a flat mail. Um, and so I'm actually making my own version here. Um, hers was sort of eight and a half by eight and a half, which was a square. Mine is eight inches by six and a half inches. Um, so, and I'm just folding the edges there. Um, I'm just doing half an inch and half an inch um, so that I can actually tuck the first half inch around the back of the actual um, flipbook um, sp spine, I guess. So, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. She is currently looking through cardboard boxes. So um, this is one of my tricks on how to line up something really, really well. So you take your double sided tape on either end and you actually only fold back um, a little edge of both so that it doesn't stick completely. It gives you the wiggle room in the center with your fingers to actually wiggle it into the right space. And with this, it was really important. I got it in the right place because of the the edge of the um, flip book. I just wanted the edges to be lined up perfectly. Um, and then when you've got it in the right place and you're holding with your fingers, you can actually pick up where you've, where you've peeled back. You can actually pick it up and then run it underneath your fingers, um, making sure that you, your fingers are really, really firmly down, but then just running out that, that edge of the tape. So it's something I've, I've learnt from, I think, Create and Craft a very long time ago um, when I first, when I was in my 20s and I'm now 37. So I'm just peeling that one back there. Um, the feathers on the back of this mail won't be seen. It's, um, I do, because it, it send, tends to pop up there, it's actually a paper on the back and it's, it's too thin. It's not holding the flip book perfectly. So I do actually end up covering up those feathers on the back. Um, not that they have any association with Nola Holmes. Um, so yeah, the movie itself was quite steampunk related. Um, so, and so this is part of Lizzie's um, flip book is you not only have that, that one, these, these two flaps that come in, you then have another set of flaps that go in again, um, but you need to make them smaller than the initial flaps so that um, if you're adding any goodies, you can actually just squeeze them into the into the space that you've allowed. So um, these two panels that I've got here with the same pattern on um, are probably one eighth of an inch smaller. And I'm also using vellum spines because I found that that I thought that was a really lovely idea to actually have a vellum spine. So the actual spine that I'm using there, if you actually want to know the measurements, is actually one inch and three eighths. And what I'm doing here is scoring half an inch on either side so that you get the three eighths in the middle. Um, so and then. Another trick that I've got here for folding vellum, you can see me struggling there because as soon as you go to fold the vellum, it then moves, even though you've scored it, it, it then moves. So I'm using my metal ruler, lining it up perfectly along the score line and then actually folding the, the vellum up on the actual ruler so that it, it doesn't, doesn't move that score line. And then you'll see here that I am just using the same method of um, double-sided tape. Um, so actually using the, the tape, I run out here of the, the nice big thick tape. So then I move on to um, my next roll that I think every crafter has a, a good stash of double-sided tape in, 
in their craft room. I hope you guys do because I think that would be my downfall if I ever fell out, um, ran out of um, double sided tape it would be definitely a downfall like because you would just have to stop crafting completely. That's a lie. I guess you'd be able to use glue, tacky glue. Um, so, um, And then I do actually realise that this one is longer because it's perfect on one side but not the other. So I just trim that off. And then um, along the way I do actually make a, a really, really big mistake. But I don't think you guys will notice. Um, I did a crafty zoom yesterday with some girls and I showed them my mistake and I was kind of gutted about my mistake at the time but as a crafter I've been taught by my friend Mary that there are no mistakes in crafting you can fix everything and um, a lot of the times nobody will notice so um, that's something that I'm, I'm really quite happy that she's taught me over the time. I am a perfectionist so I was gutted when I realised that I'd made the mistake um, but um, it worked out in the end. I love the mail that I've, that I've come up with here so and um, yeah so if you are following along with me I have done ruler instructions, I have the visual you can actually work out the, the measurements that you'll need along the way. Um, so yeah, these spines here are definitely one and three eighths of an inch. Um, so, and I, I, like I said, I've scored either side at half an inch so that the three eighths, it actually does become in the middle. And so the first spine that I did was actually half an inch. So then the next spine along is three eighths and it just allows for the goodies to go into this mail. And um, these flaps here are just a bit shorter, only an eighth shorter than the, the initial um, flap in the middle so that it can fold in and fold in nicely without actually catching on anything. So just folding back the tape on either edge and then um, the reason I keep folding the vellum back on itself here is because I have chosen to use the side um, that I'm sticking. So I don't know whether that makes sense, but in order for me to slot it into the vellum and slot it in nicely, I've, I've actually um, slotted it in and um, yeah, it's... It's good to actually bend it back and actually have that ability to actually put the cardstock right in the corner of the vellum. And then I just fold it back once it's stuck. So there we go. That's the, the, the base of the mail there. And it opens up either side. And you can see me opening it up, but it, it's bending that back piece when you actually open it all the way up. It should actually just lay flat. So I do actually, um, in that, that little pause there in that little break um, I have actually put a different cardstock on the back to hold it as a firm cardstock. Now so this here is the um, the part where I make um, a secret mail um, or hidden section on my flip book. Um, so I'm actually making an envelope um, here or a faux envelope um, with the brown card and paper and the craft paper. The craft paper is what I'm using actually as the, the faux envelope um, on top as the decoration because I didn't like the brown cardstock but the cardstock is actually needed for um, the actual hidden hidden area that is going to be in the flip book. So you'll see me here I'm just cutting out what the the edge of the, the envelope would be and um, yeah so I really like the way that this this um, idea turns out um, if you do want to skip ahead you're more than welcome to skip past this section 
but this might be handy for people to know if you want to actually ever make a hidden section on your flipbook. Um, if it was me, I would probably get a, a cardstock for next time that um, actually is, is the cardstock I just want to use so that I don't have to decorate it with craft paper. So um, I've just cut out the, the, the faux envelope frontage um, and now what I'm doing is um, I'm checking the this, this size of my envelope, my faux envelope that I've made and then I'm just cutting little tiny strips. I'm cutting four of each length um, and I'm doing each side of the, the faux envelope. So you'll see why I do this. Now you can, if you want to, just use double-sided um, foam tape, but I wanted the flip book to, when you look at it from the side or if you look at this um, hidden pocket, I wanted it to actually look like the, it was all one thing. And in order to achieve that, you actually have to use the same coloured cardstock that you use for the actual envelope. Um, if you use foam tape, um, and I'm, I'm not sure whether you can get like a black foam tape, um, but if you use foam tape, you're going to have this really nice obvious white edge to the underneath of your faux envelope. And it's basically going to give away the secret straight away that there's something underneath that you've hidden so I've cut brown strips and they are going to be layered up as my foam tape and I'm going to use the tacky glue there um, to layer up those brown strips as my um, as my foam tape I hope you're getting what I'm saying so I've just stuck down that craft paper on the front because that's my um, decoration that I wanted on, on the front of the envelope. So here we go. I'm just going to be sticking brown strips together. Um, so it's going to be four brown strips on each of the edges. So I've got um, the same length as the, the envelope. And so this creates a nice tuck spot for me to hide a hidden message because then I glue this down um, and it then becomes a really really yummy spot. Now you could if you wanted to try to actually make a gusseted envelope um, but I think as well that that would be too obvious that there's something behind there as well. So and then with my hidden message, I do actually create a, a really nice mechanical pull tab. And so, like I said, if you want to skip past this section um, to the mail, you're more than welcome. This section is quite a long section of the video. Um, and it's literally me making a, a, a hidden section for my Enola Holmes um, mail, in my themed mail. So Enola Holmes actually has um, hidden messages along the way from her mum. And so, yeah, it's a really good movie if you're into, like, detectives. Um, and, yes, yeah, so hidden messages, basically. So I'm just using my acrylic block. That's another good tip for anyone. Um, if you want to, because you've used wet tacky glue, if you want something to dry, you can actually just put your acrylic block onto the onto the actual item to dry. Um, so I'm just using a cream cardstock here. I'm just um, the little grid paper is what I'm actually going to be writing the hidden message on, and so I've just measured out a length of cream cardstock so that I can um, use it for my hidden message to slide into um, the brown envelope. I really hope you understand that I'm what I'm trying to do here. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, it'll it'll look fabulous in the end, I, I promise. So I'm just using my grid paper here and sticking it down onto the cream card stock because that's the thing that's going to slide in and out of that brown envelope that we've created. And then I also want to put some hidden items or, or some embellishments on the top. Um, my camera did cut off, so I actually have fussy cut some um, items from the Minte craft collection that I'm using. Um, I think it's called Love Letters. Um, and it's upside down at the moment, but you will see it eventually. <laughs> and so with the remainder of that cream length of cardstock, I've just scored the end of it um, half an inch. Um, and then I'm also using some more brown cardstock um, to create the faux top of my, my policy envelope. And I'm just going to stick that onto the back of the card strips. So I skip ahead here. This is my um, cream card that slipped in. We've got the embellishments on the top and um, you've got now the back of the brown envelope. I'm just using a text paper here um, because this is going to hide my mechanism. So I'm just measuring there by eye, which is what I do a lot of the times when I'm making um, an overlay onto a, a unhappy mail and normally what I'll do is I'll use my fingernail and just pinch on the paper where I need to cut um, so I think here I, I'm just looking to where I'm going to cut but then I realized I didn't do my fingernail technique so I'm just um, going to pull it out and just double check it because if you don't double check things they then make massive mistakes and I have already made my massive mistake by this stage um, but like I said I'm hoping you guys will never notice only the girls on the zoom will know <laughs> so I've just cut there the the width that I need and I'm just measuring out the height that I need this time I didn't, don't actually use my fingernail to pierce it because I actually see a letter on the actual script or a, a number on the script that I know that I can cut to um, and that's kind of handy it means that you're not not actually denting the paper so that is going to hide my mechanism that piece there and so I need to take my craft knife and um, slice underneath where my envelope is going to sit and I'm going to slice a horizontal line so I'm just placing where I think my envelope is going to um, sit and stay and um, so then I think I bring in a mechanical pencil to where I would put my horizontal line Like I said, I'm very sorry if you don't want to see this mechanism being made and this hidden pocket being made. More than welcome to skip ahead. Um, I'm not sure what the time frame would be, um, but yeah, I'll be close to the end because a lot of the decoration of this mail gets done off camera. I'm just showing you the, the technical parts. So I've just used a little mechanical pencil there to show me where... Um, I want to cut my horizontal line across this paper. What I do is I line it up with my mat and then I use the dots of my mat to line up my ruler. And then I know that I have a horizontal line that is even. So I start um, at one side and pull down and then I move the ruler tiny, tiny fragment and then do the same line again. Um, so that I am getting a slot in which the card can slide through. See there, that's just a tiny, tiny fragment that I'm actually peeling out of the slot. And so this, um, this slot needs to be as wide as that cream card stock, that long strip, um, to slide through. 
so that is going to be the mechanism and so then this cream cardstock with the um, the fold down at the bottom the fold will stick onto the bottom of the message card so I'm just using double-sided tape there um, to stick onto the bottom and then the cream card will slot through that um, horizontal line that we've made now I'm just using some double-sided um, foam pieces here to make sure that the card can't go any lower than what it's supposed to in, in the envelope um, the embellishments at the top actually stop it from going further down into the brown envelope but I just wanted to make sure that I have um, something stopping on the inside so I'm just using some tacky glue along the edges that I have created um, where you would normally have a double sided tape and then along the, the back of the top of that base envelope and then I stick it down onto the script cardstock and so that is the, the, the base that's hiding our mechanism from sliding in and out now so I've learned um, I've made my own mechanism here and you can actually buy dies that help you make these mechanisms and they are from my favorite things um, it's a it's a card company that creates these pull pull tab mechanisms but what I've done is I have um, worked out how to make the mechanism myself without a die and that's what I've shown you there so the message that I'm writing down here is just on a pad that I've got off onto the left and the message that I am writing um, is um, all in gobbledygook it's basically um, my ciphers um, alphabet so I'll just slide that back down so that I can then stick the base card which is the script onto my flipbook first of all I am cutting the pull tab and you have to make sure that when you cut it that everything that you've got the the mechanism is all the way down so that it's at its shortest height um, and then I've just um, punched the corners just to round them and now I'm just using double-sided tape to stick around the edges of the script paper so you're only sticking down three edges of that script paper you're not doing the top because otherwise your mechanism will not work and will not pull so and I'm sorry if you guys are not really interested in this kind of happy mail um, information so I am just popping that down onto that edge and with that pull tab mechanism I come in with a grey ink it's um, a distress oxide hickory smoke and I will um, stamp across the top pull here so I love the way that I have included little hints of Enola Holmes. You've got the bicycle there, which is a, a sticker that I have. It's a vellum sticker that I found in a, it's almost like a steampunk set that I have. Um, and then I've got, um, I end up putting a, a bodice on the front of the mail. Um, the bodice has, um, it's the cage that they used to wear around. It's like the skirt that they used to wear back in the day and um, yes the the skirt that um, she has to wear in the in the movie in order to fit in to society so I'm really happy with how that works um, you pull it up see the message and pop it pop it back down um, and like I said, if you'd used double-sided tape on the on the brown, it would give it away because it would be really, really white around the edge. 
so this is my closure on the front that's the the bodice that i was talking about with the the cage the skirt that they used to have to wear um, and these are minto papers it's the love letter that's a cut apart there um, and then just a piece of the other paper and uh, just one of the embellishments that i've die cut from the the side that's my handmade paper there that i did underneath just above the bicycle and it says our future is up to us um, in the movie she finds one of her her mum's paintings and it's a blue flower with um, that message our future is up to us underneath um, I've got a little map there a little vellum sticker map um, because she she looks a lot at um, the, the maps of London in the movie so and then another bodice there it's more like a steampunk bodice um i just really really liked the the, the connection to the movie with these stickers um and then for the gifts i'm or the goodies that i've put in here um i've just put these little journaling papers and underneath i have um some mini music papers that i have printed out from my computer I downloaded some free sheet music and I have been able to um, put them make them into JPEG images resize them and print them out on just sketchbook paper um, so it's acid free sketchbook paper and you'll see here I am actually pointing at some script washi that I've used on the corners and then um, I've got some die cuts in that right vellum pocket. Um, I found some die cuts. There's one that's a crossword puzzle. And then I've found a silhouette of, um, I'm guessing, like Sherlock Holmes with the, the bowler cap. Um, so that's my mechanism there and my hidden message. Absolutely love the way that that turned out. Um, and I have left um, the Minte papers um quite blank because they're very very detailed in themselves um that's the one thing about the minto papers that they have so much detail to look at you don't really want to cover it up and then so i'm just showing you that um set of die cuts there that i found in my stash and i've associated them all and then i have some wax seals here that match the colours of this um, Happy Mail. And then this one says, look in my chrysanthemums, which is one of the messages that Enola Holmes gets from her mum. And so I'm closing this one up. And when I've written the message, look in my chrysanthemums, it's because on the back I have found um, an envelope or I have made an envelope out of a, a colouring book page where I found um, with flowers of chrysanthemums. So it's basically guiding the recipient of this mail to look for her letter, which is just going to go in that envelope on the back. Um, so you can see the cardstock in the back is the one that I've covered the feathers with. And then I've put a brown craft paper pocket on here with some um, small versions or I've cut some um, off my handmade paper to slide in that pocket. I absolutely love how this Happy Mail's turned out. So thank you, Vivian, for the inspiration. Um, I've got a train vellum sticker just there um, for the movie that, that when they catch the train. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Take care, lots of crafty love and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.